Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Keith and I'm sure glad you stopped by today. In today's video, I invite you to come along with me as I take you step by step on how to direct grill chicken leg quarters on your charcoal grill. And I'm confident if you follow and practice the steps that we talk about today, you're going to be able to serve up some chicken leg quarters that look like these to your family and friends with the utmost confidence. If that sounds good to you, let's dive in. Now let's dive into meat preparation. Uh, first thing, I know there's a lot of guidance out there about, hey, you shouldn't rinse your meat because of cross-contamination, this, that, and the other. Well, it wasn't like that years ago. <laughs> and I'm old school when it comes to my position on rinsing meat and prepping meat. So I like to rinse my chicken for, for a few reasons. Number one, I like to rinse away any residual blood um, that I might see. Two, I like to rinse away any bone fragments. And number three, any foreign particles. I really want to know what this chicken is working with. You know what I'm saying? Um, before we put our seasoning on and do all that. So although I do rinse my meat, I'm definitely mindful of disinfecting not only my sink, my kitchen area, my utensils as necessary, trying to minimize any uh, cross-contamination. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go, we're gonna go through all our pieces of uh, chicken leg quarters and we're gonna trim up any excess skin and fat. Because I'm grilling direct today, I gotta pay close attention to this. I wanna trim all this out the way so this is not an additional fuel source, right? We're gonna have this meat hovering over that charcoal and I don't want fat and skin dangling in the coals and possibly igniting a flare up. So let's go ahead and make sure all our chicken leg quarters are trimmed and ready to go. Now let's talk about the seasonings we're gonna be using today. First, we're gonna use some extra virgin olive oil. I enjoy using this extra virgin olive oil, especially when I'm direct grilling. It's gonna help us uh, provide that additional barrier to protect our moisture in our chicken. So definitely consider using you some extra virgin olive oil. Second is my Lowry seasoned salt. Man, Lowry's is a good all-purpose seasoning and I really like to use this as a base for when I'm seasoning different cuts of meat, not only chicken. And lastly, to complement our Lowry's, we're gonna use this Badia all-purpose seasoning. This is going to help it give a bit more texture and a bit more flavor. So those are the seasonings we're going to be using today. Now we're ready to season our meat. First thing I like to do before we go to our dry seasonings is to rub some extra virgin olive oil on our meat. And what this is going to do, it's going to add as a level of protection. It's going to protect our meat from some of those intense temperatures we're going to subject it to by grilling directly over those coals. And it's going to help lock in some of that moisture. So first, let's rub each piece down with some extra virgin olive oil. Now we're ready for our dry seasonings. I'm gonna start off with the Lowry seasoned salt, sprinkle it on both the front and the back side and really work it into that meat. I like to massage it into that meat, really work it into those fibers and make sure you get under, under that skin flap as well and really work it in there. So after we do the Lowry's, then let's come back with the body of complete and then rub that in there as well. Now here's a view how your chicken should look after you've got all your seasonings rubbed in, right? You want it to be uniform and you want all those seasonings to be equally distributed across each piece of meat. Now when it comes to seasoning meat, and it's really about taste, right? What, did, what does your palate like? What does your family's palate like? Now one thing to be mindful of is using too much salt and that's what I had to be mindful of today. So definitely be mindful of how much salt the different seasonings that you're using has in it. For example, the Lowry seasoned salt has salt in it and the body of complete uh, uh, all-purpose seasoning has salt in it. So therefore, I had to use a light distribution of both because I didn't want to oversalt the meat. So definitely season to taste what your palate likes, what your family's palate likes, but be careful not to oversalt your meat. So we've got our meat seasoned ready to go. One thing I'm going to do is just let it sit on the countertop for a little bit. Um, let this uh, chicken come up to room temperature since it's been uh, sitting in the fridge for quite a bit So let's let this chicken sit out come up to room temperature and Now let's head out to the grill and let's talk about grill setup now Let's talk about grill prep first thing I like to do is just dump my ashes from the prior grilling session um, Here I have my char griller and it has an ashtray that I can simply remove and I keep a, a trash can here on the deck that I can just put my ashes in. If you have a kettle style grill, similar type of concept. Uh, your ashtray is gonna be at the bottom. You would dump your ashtray. And if you have any residual ashes in the kettle itself, uh, you would get rid of those. So regardless of what type of grill you have, let's remove all those ashes from the prior grilling session. 
And the reason why you want to remove those ashes is that a lot of ashes may smother your uh, charcoal, the newly lit charcoal. And also, we don't want those old ashes to rise up in our grill and possibly overtake our meat. So those are some reasons why you need to consider cleaning out your ashtray before grilling. Next step we're going to do is we're going to light our chimney starters. Now for my char griller, most of the time I'm using two standard size chimney starters and we're going to fill those up with some charcoal briquettes. Now you want to get you a quality charcoal briquette. Uh, a lot of times you'll see me will go with Kingsford. Kingsford is a quality briquette. I know there's some other uh, quality briquettes on the market so definitely find you a quality charcoal briquette or if you want to use lump charcoal or even wood, now is your opportunity to do that. Now. I like using chimney starters. I transitioned to chimney starters years ago. Once upon a time, I used lighter fluid. The, the challenge and the problem with lighter fluid is, is that if you use too much, you can, um, you can saturate your lighter fluid and that taste can then get into your meat. But if you don't use enough lighter fluid, the coals are not gonna be lit. So I just decided years ago to transition away from that. Let's eliminate the risk of lighter fluid uh, taste being in our meat and let's go with chimney starters and with chimney starters it's reliable and I know I'm going to get a uniform even fire every time I light them up now if you need some help in how to use chimney starters I'll drop some cards up here and drop a link down in the description below to a video I have dedicated on how to use chimney starters so it's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes for our coals to get ready so do me a huge favor if you got any value out this video so far, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate it. Now, while our coals get ready, let's just talk about um, direct grilling for a minute. So, direct grilling is a technique that I use quite a bit. And there are a couple of reasons why I prefer direct grilling a lot of times when I'm out here on the grill. Number one is time. <laughs> A lot of times when you see me grilling, I'm grilling a, a lot of meat, a whole lot of meat, more than the average person or family. It's because my wife and I have eight children. So whenever I fire this grill up, it's not just onesies and twosies, you know, unless I'm cooking for myself and my wife. It's a lot of time. It's 24 hamburgers. It's 24 leg quarters. It's two to three family packs of, <laughs> of wings. <clears throat> and using the direct method allows me to get the entire surface area out of my grill because the amount of leg quarters we're doing today I couldn't do that on my Weber I just did not have enough space on my Weber so that's what prompted me to transition from the Weber to the char griller uh, because I can get more space out of the grill so the number one is time because I can get more meat on the grill I'm going directly over the coals I can decrease the amount of time I'm out here now I could smoke the meat, right? I can use my offset uh, firebox right here if I wanted to, but now you're looking at six to eight hours smoking the meat. So direct grilling saves me a lot of time, especially when I'm trying to cook a lot of meat up for my family. And the second reason why I go direct a lot of times, man, is taste. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again. Of all the techniques, of all the techniques, the direct method is going to give you the most intense charcoal flavor because you have that meat sitting right above those charcoals. And there's a difference between the taste from a piece of meat that's been directly over those charcoals than even going indirect. Right? There's a difference in the taste of a piece of meat that's been smoked, right, with your different different types of hardwood versus being over that charcoal. And over the years, I have just come to thoroughly enjoy that intense, smoky, charcoal taste that's only imparted upon that meat when it's directly over those charcoals. So those are a couple reasons why um, I like the direct method and I use it so much. And number one was time, right? The amount of time it saves me because we're right there over the coals and the amount of food I can get over my tire grill. And number two is taste. So definitely keep that in mind the next time you fire up your grill. So it's been about 15 to 20 minutes and these chimney starters are ready. These charcoal is ready to go. So I'm gonna show you a view now of what it looks like when your coals get done. So since we're using these chimney starters, we don't have to wait until our charcoal um, ashes all over. At the point where you see the flame licking the top like you see right here and you see ashes start to form in the corners, you're good. So let's go ahead and get these dumped out. We're 
going direct today. So I'm just going to simply try to get these spread out. Okay. So that's what I'm talking about, y'all. You don't have to wait until they ash all the way over. And these kinkfish are coming out the gate swinging. Let's go right there. This one here. And this one right here. I'm going to close the lid up. And we want to get this grill hot so that we can clean it. Now, one thing I want to do, let's go ahead and set our vents. For my exhaust vent up here at the top, uh, on my stack, I like to set this at halfway. And that's already set. Now let's come over here to the intake vent. My intake vent, which is down here, I like to set this wide open. And it is wide open. So at this point, um, grill, we're just waiting for our grill to get hot so we can clean it. <laughs> and look at that. It didn't take but a couple of minutes, y'all. This grill is hot and ready to go. So now let's go ahead and clean it. Now we're ready to clean our grill. We got me my... Uh, wire brush Just knocking off a lot of this grease from our last cook and the reason why you see a lot of that flare up we cooked burgers last time I'll drop a link to the video but I cooked some uh, frozen burgers and you see we got some of that grease left over from those last burgers so we just gonna let let that grease just burn itself off before we put our meat on. Now I'm going to spray down my grill brush. So I got my grill brush sprayed. Now I'm just going to come in and clean my grates. Get my grates nice and lube. I don't want this meat sticking to the grate. So that's all I'm doing. Now let's get this grill closed. And um, we've already cleaned it, but before we put the meat on, I want this grill to calm down a little bit. Uh, we just got those coals on. Remember, we got some grease that's uh, remaining from the last cook. So I want this grill to calm down a little bit and stabilize uh, before I put the meat on. So hold on and we'll be right back. All right, y'all, we're back. Our grill has calmed down a bit. So let's go ahead and get this meat on. I didn't put it directly on. Remember, I was gonna wait till it calmed down. But she's nice and hot right now, man. And I'm just coming in with these leg quarters. I'm going um, skin side down first. This grill is hot. I'm grilling direct. And as you see, I have my coals distributed across this whole grill evenly. So I don't have a safety area. Um, there are times where you see some people grill with multiple zones and I've done that, but man, when I'm, those days where I'm, I need to grill up a lot of meat and uh, I don't have the time to really be out here all day. This is where I crank up the temperature a little bit and I try to load this char griller down as much as it'll, it'll take. But the catch is you got to be on your game. Can't be caught slipping out here without without a uh, without a uh, safety zone. So that's the benefit of having multiple zones. And if you're first starting out grilling, um, that's probably what I recommend. Well, first starting out with a direct method is to have multiple zones in your grill. And you don't have to um, spread your coals across your whole grill like I'm doing. You would all, you would only spread it apart across a portion of your grill. And then keep an area with no coals as your safe area that you move to. In the event you have like a bad flare up, and you need to get get out that uh get out that direct direct heat. So yeah, that backside man is starting to flare up on me. I don't know if y'all can see that. But that backside, you gotta watch it. And grilling like this too forced me to learn how to manage flare ups, how to minimize flare ups. And when they happen, not to panic, right? But that still means you got to pay attention. So that's how we looking now, y'all. We got some flare ups trying to happen. So let's go ahead and get this closed. 
And there we have it, meat on the grill. So we just put the meat on the grill and if you can see that, that temperature is climbing back up there. So this grill is nice and hot. You see it's almost hitting uh, 400 now, almost hitting 400. So we got the grill nice and hot. That means we got to pay attention though. So hold on and we'll be right back. All right, y'all, it's been five minutes. I know this grill is running hot. We're at 420 right now. So I'm not giving it any longer than that. So let's get in here, work this grill, see what we are doing. Yep. So although I see all that activity below y'all, I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking, man. I'm a, I've been here before with this grill. I know we got that olive oil hitting it. I just wanted to do a nice skin side down. So I'm not panicking. I'm not reaching for my water bottle. I'm just working my grill, doing what I need to do. Because all those flames you see, that's all flavor. That's all flavor right there. All right? So I just wanted to do that meat side down. How to add to that flavor a little bit. But now I'm getting in here and flipping it over. So that bone side cannot take a lot of that heat. There we go. Now let's get it closed, y'all. We can't play around. Let's get it closed. So five minute flip in and out we saw how it was cooking saw that these temperatures are high and that's what we want right now for this direct direct grilling i want these high temperatures but just get in and out and not wasting a lot of time all right y'all we're coming in for another five minute flip and check the temperature gauge is showing 400 degrees right here so let's get into it now i can tell by my aggressive sizzle that we're still cooking good y'all so at this point, I just want to check my backside and see how I'm doing. I don't want that backside to get too charred on me. So I'm just checking my backside here. I think I'm going to go ahead and just rotate. Go for another rotate right here. But I can't be, I can't be uh, lollygagging, y'all. Not with this direct method. You got to get in and out, man. You can't, you can't lollygag up under this grill. And I'm being mindful too, if I go skin side down again, I don't want that skin to get too charred. I'm trying to look at too, what, where my hot areas are. What's hot, what's cool, so I can use that to my advantage. And because my air intake is on that side, typically on my grill, this area is gonna be cooler. And that's what I'm seeing now, this area over here is a bit cooler. And that all makes sense. Now your grill may be a bit different. But that's how I'm usually set up. And the hot area typically is going to be either over here or in the middle. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Five minute flip. We're looking good. I do want to do a rotate though. I want to put these in the middle. I want them to get some of that middle, middle action. So I'm going to take these right here that have been on the end, get them in the middle. Get them right there. Put these back on this side. And I want everything knee side down. And let's get this grill closed. We got some flare ups happening back there, so let's close her up. So that's, that's grill management is so important when you're cooking direct like this, especially at higher temperatures. Now you don't have to use two chimney starters like I use, right? You can use one, you can use half a chimney. You don't have to use two. Um, but I like using two because I want to achieve those higher heats, those higher temperatures um, to try to shorten the grilling session a little bit and get in and out. But you got to be careful, right? You got to work your way up to this. You don't want your fire too hot to where you can't manage it and it's burning too hot for your meat and your meat's getting charged, right? Charred, excuse me. So that's when you know you need to dial back the charcoal um, until you get the hang of it, until you learn how to control your grill tip. So let's let this do its thing. 
We may go five minutes if that, and we'll be right back. All right, y'all, it's been about three minutes. Um, I didn't want it to go too long. Our temperature gauge is still showing 400, so let's go in here. Now, first thing I want to do is I want to give this a little spritz. Um, I got a little all-purpose spritzer here. We have some higher temperatures. All right, just giving this a nice little spritz. And let's go ahead and get our flip on. The spritzing, I don't like to overdo it because I don't want to create too much uh, steam and possibly prevent that charcoal flavor from uh, getting in that meat. So I just want to do just a light, a light spritz. And I might do that just once, maybe twice in the cook. And I'm not trying to spritz every time I go in here. I don't want to put that much moisture because I still want to have a nice, you know, a nice texture on my skin. But yeah, I'm liking that. I'm liking that color, y'all. I'm liking that char. That's the, that's the right, right amount of char for me. That's good right there. I'm just trying to hang with this grill and let these temperatures calm down a little bit. So we're going bone side down, meat side, skin side up. Give this back side a little, a little spritz. There we go. In and out. Let's get it closed. So we're about 20, 20, 25 minutes into this cook. And what I want to do now, gang, is I want to add a few hickory chunks uh, to the fire. Our temperature gauge right now is showing about 380. Fire is cooled off a little bit. I want to use this opportunity to get a bit more flavor. I know my fire is burning hot. This wood is nice and dry, so this should ignite pretty quickly for some uh, nice clean smoke so what i'm gonna do is just peek in here i got my firebox open let's go ahead and get this hickory in here and get it going so we're not going for a real heavy smoke today just a light smoke and since my chimney stack is over here to the left i want to add that wood to the right side so that wood has to travel right across the grill and then out so whenever i add wood i always add my wood opposite my stack so to make that smoke have to travel across that grill and out the stack if we had to just put that right here right that smoke would just go straight up out the exhaust and we would have very little to no smoke to get the meat over here to the right so that's a quick tip for you especially on these char grillers um Put your, put your wood over here to the right if you're gonna add wood or put the wood opposite your stack so it has to travel over your meat. Now let's head over to my Weber. Uh, mentioned to y'all before I got this Weber here. And on my Weber, um, the way I would do this if I, added, if I added wood, let's say you got a kettle grill like the Weber, all I would do is just rotate this. And if my fire is right here, my vent needs to be right here. So it has to go across the entire grill. Now, if my fire is on this side, my coals are on this side, then I'm doing this. Add it over here. So wherever you add your wood chunks, try to place that vent opposite that. All right, so it has to travel all the way around. All right, y'all, we're coming back in. It's been about eight minutes. Temperature gauge is showing What's that? That's about 370 degrees. Remember last time around, we added a little bit of hickory chunk. I can smell it. I can smell that hickory. So uh, we're getting a nice clean smoke. You know, this grill is already hot, so that's very good. So let's go ahead and get into it. See what we're working with under here. Oh yeah. Like the colors. How we looking on this backside? Backside's looking good. Right, this back side can take the heat a whole lot better than that skin side. So that's what I'm just checking now. Just checking my back. See how I'm looking. This char griller is settling down, y'all. This grill is settling down quite nicely. I like what I'm seeing. Remember, we didn't panic. 
and you have those flare ups like that y'all just don't panic man that'll come as you put more time on the grill you're not reaching for the water and kicking up all the ashes and putting your fire out but that comes from time and knowing your grill so i'm just checking the back side of these to see how long i want them to go how much longer can they go on this, on this back side without getting too charred so that's what i'm looking now to see how long can they go I don't have any problem with that. Uh, we spritz last time in. I think we're okay on the spritzing. Because I like to spritz every so often, but not too much. Because I want that skin to crisp up. You know what I mean? I don't want to do something that's going to make it too soggy to where it won't crisp up. So I'm okay with that. So yeah, what I do want to do is give these here some of this action. Some of this center action right here. y'all right, let's go ahead and get this grill closed we got a flare up trying to happen right here so let's close it down that's that wood y'all right there where i added that hickory um so the wood is burning nicely but i don't want it to burn too aggressively that's why i've already closed it but in my mind i want to make sure that my pieces right there aren't going to get burnt so what i'm going to do is come over here to this firebox and i want to take a pick of that hickory hickory and see how it's burning and i see it's still burning pretty aggressively so at this point, I want to come back in and I'm going to stack these pieces right over here. That hickory over here is burning pretty aggressively, y'all. So I'm going to do a little stacking. I'm going to get my meat out of that hickory zone right there. There we go. So at this point, I want to get that meat out of that hickory. I might put a piece up here and a piece up top but not directly over so I'm going to let that hickory just do its thing and I don't want to put my meat right over it and have another fuel source so let's go ahead and just roll like this for a while and let that fire go down We're back, it's been about five to six minutes. Our grill is showing about 400, let's say 10 degrees. So at this point, we're gonna go in, manage our grill, and I also will spritz if necessary, depending on what I see. So let's get into it. Remember, we moved our uh, meat away from our hickory. Our hickory chunks are still down there doing its thing, generating some smoke. Yeah, and I just didn't wanna have that meat directly over there and run the risk of possibly losing anything. So just working our grill now, I'm gonna spread it out ever so cautiously here. Yep. Everything looks good. Spreading out a little bit more, y'all. I like what I'm seeing. Let's go ahead and get it close and uh, let it do its thing. It's been five minutes, y'all. Temperature gauge is dropping down. We're at 360 degrees right now, but I wanna come back in because I wanna get our meat distributed. Remember, I was giving our uh, wood chunks over here a little bit of room since they were running kind of hot over here with an open flame. So I wanna redistribute the meat now. So that's why I'm coming in here just redistributing the meat. Everything looks good. Seeing now how our backside looks. 
because the amount of char on this uh, skin side is about what I want. Really don't want any more char than that on the skin side. So I'm just looking to see if that back side can take a bit more char. And I think it can. Yeah, I know it can. So those pieces I want to be a little bit more charred. I'm just trying to pick those out. And the pieces that I want to be a bit more charred would be a couple of them. Not those. Those are good. But this one right here. I want it to be a bit more charred on that skin. And this one right here. Yeah. But other than that, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing so far. And what you're seeing here too, that this chicken, like these leg quarters, they can take heat, y'all. They can take heat. Low and slow is okay. But, uh, man, you want to come in hot and fast with some chicken? That's what I'm trying to just show with this technique, that you don't have to necessarily go low and slow all the time, right? There's a definitely a time for low and slow. Don't get, don't get it wrong. But there's also hot and fast. If you manage your grill right, you pay attention to details, you don't neglect moisture, you can go this way as well. So let's go this for a few more minutes. I want that skin side to crisp up a little bit, and we'll be right back. So y'all, we're about an hour into this cook. I think we're like five minutes short of the hour mark. Our temperature gauge is uh, showing now 360 degrees. So let's just go in here and just see what we're looking like right now. Yeah, I like what I'm seeing to be an hour in. I'm liking the color. Remember, these are some pieces that we put skin side down because I wanted, yeah, that's what I was going for. I wanted that skin side, y'all, to have a bit more color. You see how our fire is settling down nicely? Yeah. So I mentioned to y'all before, with this direct method, going hot and fast like this, the first 45 minutes to an hour are the most intense and you really gotta be on your game right that charcoal is mean it's burning fast grill hasn't really settled down yet but after that hour mark when that grill starts to settle we're looking good so at this point i like the color on a lot of these pieces and i just want to come in with my uh, temperature gauge and just see where i am so i'm not going to hit the bone i want to come in on this thigh in between this thigh and this leg let's get a temp on where we are 190, 202, 206, oh yeah, oh, we're about there y'all, 194, now I mentioned to y'all before, I don't have any problems cooking past the internal um, safe to eat temperature, right, internal safe to eat temperature for chicken is 165 degrees, if it's temping, 165 degrees and I don't have this texture that I want right here I'll keep it on the grill but now if I keep it on the grill I need to be mindful of moisture so I don't dry it out and temperature so I don't continue to cook it too fast and dry it out but I don't mind this chicken staying on here although it's coming in over 165 because our grill has stabilized right we don't run the risk of burning this meat out we spritzed it as we've gone along Oh yeah, I like that. So although it's over 165, I'm not gonna just pull this meat right now. I'm gonna let it continue to do its thing. And at this point, I'm just checking my backside on my meat to make sure I don't get it too charred, All right? I don't wanna get it too charred on my pieces. And that's all I'm doing right now. Any pieces on the back side that run the risk of being a little too charred, I'll just move them over here to my cool area, which is the left side. That's all I'm doing now, checking. Like that right there, that may be a, a little bit too charred for some. So what I'm going to do is just stack it. I know that it's coming back done, I'm going to stack. So the ones that are a bit charred, that I don't want them to get any more charred, I'm just going to simply stack them over here on the cool area just manage my grill a little bit all right let's make sure yeah 
So I make sure the ones that I stack them on are um, are not too charred themselves. There we go. So that's a little one. Yeah, that's a good one right there. So all these are coming back at the right temperature. So I'm just going to start stacking them over here to my left. So the ones that are at the chart at the chart to the point I want them and I don't want them to get charred anymore I'm just going to sit those up a bit higher on the stack there we go this is a small one at this point I'm just managing my grill y'all that's all it is it's not rocket science it's not rocket science at all it's just managing the grill those that look to be um, <clears throat> done charred on that dark side I'm just stacking them at the very top to get them out that heat that's all I'm doing go just a little bit longer and then I'm gonna pull it five minutes y'all if not that there's some pieces that I want to be a little bit more charred on that back side but I'm just temping them right here and y'all can see we're coming in right where we need to be we're coming in over in the safe to eat temperature so I'm gonna let these go a little bit longer and then we're gonna pull them y'all hold on and we'll be right back you say hi Noah say hi YouTube say hi say hi all right you ready to eat some chicken? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. It's almost done. All right, y'all. It's been about 70 minutes, and we have come to the end of this grilling session. So total grilling time today is 70 minutes. Our temperature range was anywhere from when we started off, we were up there like 450 degrees. Remember, we were burning real hot, but over time, that grill settled down, and I think we ended up in the 350 to 360 range when, it, when it's all said and done. So. I'm about to go ahead and pull this meat off here, but man, I would love for you all to come to the table with me after we get this meat off, after we let it rest, and just enjoy this meal with myself and my family. So hold on, let me get this meat off, and I'll see you at the dinner table. All right, y'all, we're back. It's been an hour and eight minutes. Temperature gauge right now is showing about 350 degrees, and uh, I just wanna come in right now and give y'all a view and I think this meat is ready to come off so before we pull it off let me bring y'all in close for a view just to show y'all what we are working with so that's what we working with today y'all these leg quarters cooked on the direct method remember we started off with some high temperatures and we had to manage our grill but uh, so far so good I'm pleased with what I'm seeing here so now let's uh let's tempt some of these just to make sure i think i put some of these over here they were coming back a bit all right so let's see yep yeah all of them are coming back above safe to eat it's just the color and uh, texture i'm looking for but i'm pleased with what i'm seeing let's go ahead and pull these off Give y'all some views of these two, right? And depending upon the amount of char you like or don't like, you can adjust as you see fit, right? y'all that backside and how we're looking all right y'all
So we got our meat off here, y'all. Uh, what I want to do now is just let this meat rest. So I'm gonna let it rest for about uh, 10, 15 minutes. Um, we got some other things we're gonna cook to go with it, but I'm not gonna cut it open just yet. We need to let it rest, let this moisture redistribute. Because when you're cooking direct like this, those high temperatures is driving that moisture to the center of that meat. And if we cut it open, that meat could dry out. So we wanna let it rest so the moisture redistributes. So we're gonna let this rest, y'all. Hold on and we'll be right back. All right, y'all, so we're all plated up right now. Here's a view of what we're working with. We got some uh, loaded baked potatoes right here, a nice salad, and here is that uh, chicken leg quarter we've been working on. And I'm a little late coming to the table. I was outside wrapping up. But if you look around the table here, you see the family already putting it in. So let's go ahead and sit down and uh, partake in this meal. All right, y'all, I'm at the table now. It's about that time. First up, we going in on this leg quarter. Going in on it. That's a view. Front. And that's a view of that backside. Just the right amount of char for me on that backside and the front side, y'all. So I'm just going straight in. Wow. That's good. Y'all can see that it's nice and juicy. It's flavorful. I like that body of complete and that virus. I like that. I think they complement each other very well. Um, yeah. Mmm. Mmm. I can taste that light hickory that we put on there. Just subtle. The subtle hickory in the background. The meat is definitely flavorful throughout and moist throughout. Mmm, that's good. I know some people take the skin off their thighs and take them off their leg quarters. But man, you're missing a flavor opportunity if you do that. I mean, true enough, you can still get them flavorful without the skin. I'm not talking about that, but that's just as another texture and level of flavor if you opt to cook with the skin on so I'm going back in this time y'all I'm going in on that back side mm, that's good let's get this leg some this drumstick over here some attention I'm just gonna tear away oh yeah nice and tender tear away effortless Mm, that's good. All right, y'all. There you have it. I just took you step by step on how to direct grill chicken leg quarters on your charcoal grill. And I am confident if you follow and practice these steps we talked about today, you're going to be able to serve up some awesome chicken leg quarters to your family and friends for them all to enjoy. And you're going to be able to do that with the utmost confidence. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope this video helped you out. If it did, hit that subscribe button and click that bell so anytime we drop a new video, you'll be the first to know. Hit that like button and leave me some comments. I'd love to hear from you. If you're interested in any of the products we used in today's video, we'll leave some links down below. Hope you have an awesome day and thanks for watching.